This is Postscript, an in-depth follow-up to the sermons you hear each week at FaithBridge. We sit down with the speaker for behind-the-scenes insight on sermon preparation and more in-depth insights and discussion. Let's join in now. Hi, I'm Christy Sprague. Thanks for joining us for a special parenting edition of Postscript. I'm here with Wayne Risher, who Pastor Ken talked about briefly during the sermon. Welcome to Postscript, Wayne. Thank you, Christy. Um, I think in just a moment you are going to, um, we're going to see a video of you and your Risher family plan. Um, right. Can you tell us a little bit more about what we're going to see on this video? Sure. Uh, I was in the business community for a long time, and as I will share in the video, I'll share it with you. And Everybody was having goals and plans for work, but when I got home, we had nothing. So we devised a plan that we could help the kids kind of move along in their journey in a bunch of different areas, and that's what the video is about. Okay, great. Well, stick around because we also have some questions that I want to um, talk about with you after we see this. Okay, great. But for now, let's take a look at Wayne's presentation of the Risher Family Plan together. All right, thanks. Hello, my name is Wayne Risher, and I'm with the Adult Ministries here at Faith Bridge. My wife, Tammy, and I have been married for 23 years, and we have four children. And before coming to Faith Bridge, I worked in the business community for a long time, and we, obviously raising four kids, um, have navigated the waters of early childhood all the way now into adulthood as one of our children are married and grown. But during this parenting series, Ken asked if we might share a tool that Tammy and I used while we were parenting our children. And we're not perfect by any means, and we don't have perfect children, but we did come across some great learning and some great books and some great teaching that helped us develop a little tool that we wanted to share with you, and hopefully some concept or some part of it may be uh, applicable to your lives. So I thought I would just tell you our story. Uh, in the last 20 years, I worked in the business community, and like many of you, I would come home at the end of the day after having met the needs of the employee met the needs of the company, you've made your goal, your objectives, you've mowed the yard, you've come home and done the laundry, uh, you've cooked the dinner, cleaned the dishes, got the kids ready for bed, and you've given 150% during the day. And you come home at the end of the day, at the end of the night, and uh, one more child cries out that they need help with their math homework, or they need help doing something else, and you just want to lose your mind because you're so ready to just crash for the night. Well, I was going through that year after year after year, and I was realizing that Everywhere around me, people were setting goals, having a plan, completely doing vision casting and work on, on vision. But yet at home, I felt like everything was running me and I wasn't really running it. So I came home from work one day and I'll just tell you our story. I got some butcher paper at the office depot and rolled it out along our, our, our uh, dining room floor. And there I started with a magic marker and I just started drawing out our story and what I thought might be a vision where we'd like to uh, take our family. And after a few minutes, and we've been doing this now about eight years, after a few minutes I had several knees kneeling down with me as I was coloring on the floor. And uh, then I had another set of knees and a couple of toes over here and a curious wife looking over the bar at what was going on. Well, as we rolled out this long piece of butcher paper, we developed what we call the Risher Family Plan. And uh, for years, we have used the same tool to work with our kids every year, kind of during the back to school season, to make sure we're giving them an opportunity to plan, to understand how to set goals, um, to have some instruction time. So this is how the Risher Family Plan has sort of unfolded. We started out really with... Uh, the end in mind. So let me show you just the things that we were thinking. And these five outcomes are the things that we wanted for our children. You don't have to copy our exact tool or use any um, uh, part of it, but the best things that we've used and that you've found, you can collect and make your own family tool. But these are the outcomes that we liked the most. As our children matured into young adults, we wanted to send them off into the world to uh, raise the next generation of richer children with the same kind of core values that our family had. So we did that by giving some outcomes that we felt were reasonable, also something that they could attain and uh, see that we're living the fruit of that. And uh, we see from the Christian life, we wanted them to love and enjoy the Christian faith. We also wanted them to develop a strong work ethic that would only come if they were seeing that modeled by their parents. Uh, so as you know, the, all the things or outcomes for them 
are actually things that we actually have to do. It requires work on our part. We also had them um, as a goal, as an outcome. We desired to see our kids not only have the ability, but the desire, the skill, the training to be able to serve others and to enjoy, to enjoy that. Also, the joys of family and marriage. We felt it was important that um, we modeled the joy of marriage, not the uh, aggravation with one another, but we, we gave them significant memories as a family so that they would also have a good model of experiencing the joys of family living. And the fifth outcome was we just wanted our kids to be responsible citizens who had good, good character. And as responsible citizens, we could send them out years ahead into times that maybe outlive us, but we would know that they had the raw skills that they needed for successful living as young adults. So if you start with the end in mind, how do you want your kids to turn out? I think the scripture is clear and all these kinds of ideas are the things that God would want for our children. So then we backed up and said, as parents, how are we going to get to the end? We've got to start at the very beginning. So as I was rolling this paper out in front of our kitchen um, bar there, I was drawing a little bit about my wife and I. And we came into this um, story uh, in 1990 as two individuals. And I tell the kids this story every time we sit down. Because they need to know that our story begins and they're included in it. And they're going to continue on past the end. So my wife came into the picture. She had her own uh, ideas about marriage and family and living and career. And I had my own set of things. But when we joined together as a family, we now had some new things that have come in. We, we have needs. We have a, a need for income, a need for living, a need for food and shelter and all those things. We also had our own plans and wants and hopes and dreams and fears and doubts and all those things. I wanted the kids to understand that when we came together, bringing our own things into a new unit as marriage, and my kids need to know and have the security to know that mom and dad's marriage is first. And when, when my kids realize how much I love my wife, treasure her, uh, treat her the right way, practice reconciliation, and give them the models of where we want them to go, our marriage needs to be first because the kids have more security when they know mom and dad love each other. So moving forward, our family grew and matured, and we ended up with six. Four girls, two boys, uh, my wife and I, and four children. So this is the time when I tell the kids that we're going to be exploring the opportunities of their youth. This is the years when you join the YMCA, and you play soccer, and you go up to the church, and you play upward basketball and upward cheerleading. This is where you try music lessons and youth group and friends and all kinds of activities. This is where you start experiencing the opportunities of youth. And I told the kids that there would be some things that they would wind up being great at, that they would love, they would enjoy, the things that they had skill set to accomplish. We would start to use these years to refine the things that they liked. And then they would carry forward some of those things. Nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. And we would also take this time to filter out and eliminate the things that they didn't like, things that they weren't good at, things that their skill set didn't apply to. And they would run these things through a filter, and every year as they got older, we would refine more of the things that they were good at, and we'd eliminate the things that they were not good at or didn't enjoy. And in part of the plan, then our kids would all go forward and we value education. Uh, I'm grateful for the education I received. I want to make sure my kids had the chance to experience higher education. And I can't make you graduate, but I can carry you to the door. So that was our plan, is the kids always knew that they would be experiencing higher education because they, from little kids, have always seen that that's where they were headed. Well, this is where the real tool came into play for us is during the flow of all these uh, ideas coming together, Tim and I would set an appointment with the kids back to school time, and we would roll out the paper in our bedroom uh, or in our study or in the dining room or the kitchen or wherever we were hap happened to be. When we rolled that paper out, the kids all had a little personal planning session with mom and dad. Uh, maybe it lasts 15 minutes when they were little, 
Maybe it would last 30, 45 minutes. Now when they're in high school and college, the times are growing and we're now meeting for an hour. And uh, I have relinquished control of the marker. It's been great. And the kids can actually set their own goals and I'm just the one facilitating the questions. But the idea is you've got to be engaged in the process. If you're not helping the kids uncover who they are, they're never going to get anywhere. And you have to train them and do the work so at the end of the day when you have 150% already spent and you give that extra 10% required to manage the family at home, it's going to pay dividends when they're older. Trust me. So... The tools that help Tammy and I the most that we're still using even today are these two tools down here. Let me share them with you. The first tool that we fell in love with was the Freedom Funnel. And from a real young age, we would always draw the funnel on a piece of paper and we would ask the kids, where are you in the process? Where are you in the funnel? And the idea is that you put the child in the funnel and responsibility and trust are pressing in. The rules of the family, what time you have to be home, if you're allowed to ride your bike, if you're allowed to make the phone call, you're allowed to have social media, all the rules and responsibility of home are tight in around them. The idea that we hope for is if they're responsible citizens of good character later is that the funnel would open up and they would have great freedoms and enjoy the blessings of having an opportunity to be responsible. The problem is as the child grows and matures, if the parent gets the results they want, you can open up the funnel and give more freedom and more responsibility and the kids are blessed because they love that. The opposite is also true. When they demonstrate behavior that's irresponsible or they violate the rules that have been placed in the household, then the funnel grows tight because mom and dad are not getting the outcomes they want. So instead of getting more freedoms, the child is choosing more rules. And Tammy and I were never the ones who were the bad guys. Yeah, kids get mad at their parents. But rather, we reminded the kids that we wanted the funnel to be open. They chose things that would cause consequences in the funnel to be closed. So if we're going to raise a responsible child that we can trust when we're not around, we need to be giving them freedom and an opportunity to fail. And when they responsibly handle uh, and earn our trust, uh, the things that they're doing, they will be able to graduate through the funnel. So when the kids were little, uh, we would ask them, well, where are you in the funnel right now? Oh, yeah, the report card makes the funnel go closed. Uh, well, where are you right now? Well, everything went good. Now the funnel is opening up and I'm getting the blessing to go here and do this and some extra freedoms. So the funnel uh, of responsibility, the freedom funnel was a great tool that helped us along these years as we navigated um, the childhood. Now, the other tool I think that was even more significant was we would give the children four areas in which they would write some goals. So you've heard Ken talk about the uh, famous here to there goal setting session or vision casting where you are here now and you need to go someplace else. I'm a beginning flute player. I need to learn how to be better. Uh, I'm in first grade now. I'm going to move to fifth grade over the years. What are you going to do to improve in these areas? So we gave the kids four categories that we wanted them to actually set goals in and to work toward that we could measure and talk about at our next goal setting session. Those areas are these areas here. The first one was social. We would set some goals in the area of social um, skills. How are they getting along with their friends? Do they want to have new friends this year? And they would say, oh, mom, I want to have two new friends this year. They would say something in the social quadrant. They also had an academic uh, quadrant where they would write down their goals for the year, all A's and B's or all A's or I want to get all uh, excellent on my uh, behavior and my conduct or areas that they wanted to improve uh, from here to there in that area. So we'd have some academic goals. Uh, Also, we would write down spiritual goals because it was important if they were going to love and live the Christian life that they were moving from here to there and growing in their area of spirituality. So we would say, uh, in your, you want to join a small group this year or how many uh, weeks do you want to attend out of the month uh, this activity or that activity that would represent ways that they could have spiritual input. And frankly, the last area... While these are all important, the last area is more of a practical parenting um, opportunity. 
where we would sit down with them and discuss personal management. And this is where the kids are actually trained for, for, for actual things in life. Like uh, an example is some man told me one time, if you're going to have a son, teach him how to drive a stick shift. Teach him how to, drive a, uh, to tie a tie. Don't let him um, go out in the world and not be prepared with the, the right kind of skills. Uh, so we thought that's good advice. Personal management. Uh, different for the girls, different for the guys. But we would talk about time, uh, chores at home. We would talk about their safety, looking around them, being aware, riding their bike, uh, on their phone, the, the social media, how to set priorities and prioritize the areas, academic, social, and spiritual, so they would know which things they should work first and second. This was our opportunity as parents to discuss things like health and hygiene. I mean, as they're coming from little kids all the way through junior high, uh, boy, you know, we've got to get you to take a bath tonight. Uh, Eventually, we've got to get you to wear deodorant on your own without having to be told. So they, they need to understand about health and hygiene. And we had this point on our large paper and uh, give us an opportunity in age-appropriate moments where we could actually talk about more things on the health and hygiene side uh, as they got into high school. And of course, you know where those talks can lead and it was, it was a great time for us. Also talk about money management how to handle their allowance, uh, or if they've earned some money. We talked about boundaries, and this conversation always would lead to a lot of things because the kids uh, learn, need to learn boundaries primarily in relationships, uh, what they allow other kids to do, uh, how they control their, their private space around, making sure their relationships with friends uh, are appropriate, in areas where they can demonstrate leadership, and be called up to uh, really, in this, in this case, do the right thing. Uh, because even when you're a third grader, you know when other children are not doing the right thing. And if you demonstrate leadership or you've been instructed how to demonstrate leadership, they can be bold and say, I'm not going to do that. Or that's not right, we shouldn't do that. Or I'm going to go and report this to the person who needs to know because what you're doing is not right. So this was a great tool, and you can see how this has application at the elementary years all the way to the high school years, and now even into college. My daughter is even setting goals in all four quadrants and uh, moving forward. So at the end, we're hoping for and are beginning to see some fruit in our family where our children are starting to learn and love the Christian life. We see that they're developing a strong work ethic, they have not only the skills and the desire, but also the ability to go out and serve others and receive uh, the joy that brings. I think our children have really seen the joy of family and marriage and have made significant memories with us that have been great. And as a result, I think they'll look forward to carrying the joys of family and marriage beyond into the next generation. And finally, I'm, I'm seeing definitely some fruit in uh, our children being uh, citizens of good character who demonstrate responsibility. So at the end, what I do with this tool is I basically drew this out on the floor. Every year we'd have an appointment, maybe sometimes twice a year we would get it out, and we would use these on a regular basis to make sure we were staying on track and the kids had an opportunity to uh, reevaluate their priorities or the goals or to make changes mm -hmm. on their direction from here to there in any one category. So why would I share all this diagram and drawings and ideas out is really only to tell you that Tammy and I learned that if we don't do anything, the world is going to come in and do something. So we figured it would be better for us to develop something that we could guide our children along toward the outcomes that we hoped for them. And as a result, we have had great family memories around this crazy chart. And I, I'm hoping that perhaps one or two of the ideas or a couple of the tools that work for us are just ideas that you can take and implement in your family in some small way. Because the Lord definitely wants your children to be witnesses and testimony for him long after you're gone as a parent. And I hope that this idea or concept, some part of this, some idea, some tool will help you in your journey as you parent intentionally at home.
Well, thank you for sharing that with us. That was so informative, and I know many people are going to be talking about that. Can I ask you a few questions sure, related sure. to that? Um, so how old were your kids when you first started the plan, and do you think there's a perfect age for somebody who's maybe just starting? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, actually, we were already into the parenting process by the time we figured out that we needed to do something. And our youngest was in the second grade, and our oldest daughter was in the eighth grade. So I would say there's never uh, a too late of a time to start. Mm -hmm. You, you want to get started as early as you possibly can. But if your kids are even entering into junior high, high school, it's not too late. You, you want to go ahead and get started. Because if you don't do something, the world is going to fill that leadership vacuum, and they're going to be training your kids in a different way that you may not mm -hmm. like. So that translates across all ages. Oh, definitely, definitely. Oh, good, okay, mm -hmm. that's encouraging <laughs> as a parent. Um, so you've obviously been doing this for a while now and you've sort of edited the plan right. as you've moved along. Um, what lessons did you learn? Or um, if you were to start over right now, would you have changed anything? Yeah, that's, that's also a very good question. And I will just give a disclaimer that Tim and I are not perfect parents and we don't have perfect kids by any means but we're on the right road, getting mm -hmm. where we wanna go. So along the way, we've gone to parenting seminars and training and read books and all the things that Ken suggested today. And along the way, I, I learned a little trick from Bill Hybels, which is the here to there journey, mm -hmm. moving people from here to there. So we really took that concept and implemented it about three years into the plan, huge help. Uh, that helped us have the kids vision cast their year. Where are you headed this year in various areas? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to get there? Not only what are your goals, but how can I support you as a parent? And sometimes that opens up some parenting windows that we're able to actually teach into. And uh, it's been some good time. Oh, that's awesome. Well, one of the questions that came in um, after Ken's sermon was related to balancing um, and time management. And um, what are the ways that we can help our kids be part of the world's activities, such as sports or clubs and activities um, that our kids enjoy, but also keep a godly focus? How do we find a balance there? Yeah. Well, with four kids, we were balancing not only time management, but also money management because too many things equals too mm -hmm. empty uh, of a wallet. So in the chart, one of the things that we went through is we were telling the kids we're going through an era where you're going to be eliminating the things which you don't enjoy, you don't like, uh, or are not working for your skill set. And at the top of the chart, there's a place where you're actually uh, refining the things that you do like, that you're good at, and your skill set totally energizes you. So there's two bars or two arrows moving forward toward the end. And we kind of follow the rhythm at home, same as FaithBridge does. As here, it's grow plus two, right? Mm -hmm. um, being in a group and church and also a serve team. At home, we kind of focus the same way. Uh, we have uh, our core of the, the church activities or the Christ part of our life. As Ken said, what's the center of your universe? Mm -hmm. And then we have two things. We let the kids kind of filter out moving into high school and late junior high that they needed to be involved in two things plus church, mm -hmm. uh, a sport and piano, flute and volleyball or something like that. That way we could whittle down. Uh, they've eliminated the things out of their youth that they don't need to do anymore, and they focus on the things that they really love. But that helped us have a balanced life because mm -hmm. we were able to focus on church, and everybody had something that we were all committed to in addition to that. Mm -hmm. That is helpful. Um, I think just uh, being so intentional and in all of that is a great first step for anyone. Uh, a great right? first step. Well, good. Well, thank you so much for being here today and for um, you and Tammy just sharing your parenting experiences and strategies with us. I know it's going to be helpful for a lot of people. Oh, I hope so. And I will tell you that the whole plan, just to add in, is not necessarily everyone's plan. Sure. As Ken said, just take something and make it your own. I know Dan and Becky Slagle have taken the Risher family plan and turned it into the Slagle family mm -hmm, plan mm -hmm. and have even added some great enhancements to it. So people are able to use these kinds of things just to help move their kids from here to there, mm -hmm. get them where they need to go. Well, thank you very much. I think it's going to be really interesting to hear uh, different families' stories so. and what comes I'm out of it. I'm looking forward to it. It's good. And thank you for joining us for another Postscript. I want to encourage you to help us to keep Postscript interactive. And there are three ways to send in your questions or comments. You can email us at postscript at faithbridge.org. You can text us at 707-670-3277 or via Twitter using hashtag FBPS. We'll be back next week. See you then.
Thank you for joining us for another Postscript. We hope this resource will help to enrich your small group discussions this week. If you're not currently a part of the life-changing community found in a small group, you're missing out on one of the best things about FaithBridge. Visit us and learn more at the Connection Center on Sunday or anytime at faithbridge.org slash groups. Also, we'd love to get your feedback about this podcast. Send us an email to postscript at faithbridge.org. We'll be back next week with a brand new postscript. Until then, have a great week.